Tonight, Jonathan Goldstein is going to do a talk uh, for CKDU delegates and for the Halifax general public. And he's going to be doing a reading as well as a Q&A. Jonathan holds uh, Wiretap, a show on CKDU, uh, on CBC, and he's a contributor to This American Life. So we thought he'd be a good fit to speak to lots of radio folks, and I think there's a keen interest to check out Jonathan and he really has to say he's a pretty, pretty funny guy. What made you decide to consider radio as a medium? For, for your writing or well I think initially I thought of it as like just um, a way to get my writing heard it was just uh, a platform but I think once I started working at This American Life I started to really develop a love of it of the of the medium so I guess it was through that show I guess that was the gateway because we didn't really listen to radio when I was a kid I mean there's some people who always had the radio on in the house but we we didn't. We mostly had uh, yelling on in the house all the time. <laughs> the radio wouldn't have been very, it wouldn't have been heard. I'm always really interested to see a radio personality speak in person. I think that someone's voice is really, and their kind of demeanor and the way that they speak is really important, but I'm really interested in body language and mannerism, so just to kind of see it all kind of come together. I like radio because um, you could really micro-edit uh, decent performances out of people who are non-performers. I'm thinking of myself, because like, like I was saying, a lot of what I say is dumb, so the beauty of radio is like you can just, I can cut out 90% of the dumb things that I say, and I don't know that you'd be able to do that with video, but with with uh, with radio, you could really like literally, you could build in pauses and you could uh, edit syllables of words to other syllables. I stutter a lot. I can cut out all my stuttering, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes stuttering sounds uh, it sounds kind of uh, forced or it sounds you know like there's a certain style of performance where people will stutter on purpose to create the semblance of uh, naturalness, you know, like, I, I, I was going to say, you know, like that kind of thing, you know, you hear often on the radio, mm -hmm. and like when you re-listen to it, you just know that it sounds like crap, so you can uh, cut out that kind of thing. I think because his personality rings true for a lot of people, maybe we don't outwardly express it all the time, but I think the things you're talking about are things that people can connect with, and interesting things about uh, relationships and the family and I don't know that inner monologue we all have but it's outward for a lot of these episodes. So. Your writing can be very self-deprecating. Do you not see yourself as as or, a performer? Yeah. Um, I think I've gotten better at it. I think because I'm called upon to do it, and so you uh, you end up having to figure it out and do the best that you can. Um, but I don't think I am. Like some people, it seems like they're natural performers. They were born to perform. They get off on uh, being in front of people and they get a kind of high. I sort of feel like I just want to get it over with, you know, and then I feel relief. But I've done stuff with people who really get a charge out of it, like people from the show when we've done <clears throat> live uh, shows and they really uh, get a charge out of it. And I see it and I'm envious of it because I just sort of feel like I want to get it over with. I want to, like you know, give people their money's worth and get back to the hotel room so I can, like, you know, watch free cable and drink from the minibar. But, um, yeah, like, like and, and, and as I said, like, I, I, I seek out people that I feel comfortable with to, to, to perform with who inevitably turn out to be people that I've known my whole life. Um, you know, like my friend Howard, who I was in kindergarten with, and my folks, and, you know, uh, other people who I've known like a long time so I think that's not necessarily the hallmark of like a natural born performer you know who like you know falls onto their knee knees at the nape of the stage and like we're gonna put on a show you know I don't I, I guess I'm not I don't, I don't feel that way what were your highlights from the talk or what did you find most interesting uh, when he talked about This American Life and when he impersonated Ira Glass. What did you think of the talk? It was really funny. 
It was extremely endearing and personable. Yeah. And I feel like everyone who was there was very excited about it. You could kind of feel the enthusiasm. Um, I think that was obvious in the, in the questions that were asked afterward, but also everyone in the audience was just as on point with Jonathan, where it would just be like this chorus of laughter every time there needed to be one. And I hope, it felt that way, but I hope that it kind of made him feel more comfortable as well. One of the first radio shows I was ever on was a community radio show on CKUT in Montreal called Dice on Mics. Um, and I remember I was very nervous about it. And I remember the producer said to me, you know, you shouldn't be nervous about radio because it's a very... Uh, how did he put it? It's a very, el not elusive, but um, ephemeral medium because it's out there and once it's done, it's done. But I guess that's changed, you know. That was a long time ago. Now things exist, uh, you know, with podcasts and archives and stuff like that, um, which, is, uh, which is really cool, I think. I don't know, maybe it's both good and bad. But um, as far as, like, my connection to... To, uh, to community radio, um, I think I always had a dream that like if I thought if I could have a like um, a radio show on CQT, which is like the community college radio station in Montreal, I thought that'd be so cool. It's something very romantic about radio to me, you know, the atmosphere of it, the way that I've seen it represented in film and television. It just seemed really, uh, really cool, you know. Because, like, I mean, like, I, I would be willing to make an effort in just talking one-on-one -on -one with somebody. So the idea of, like, being able to multiply that, even if it's three or four or five, six people, you know, um, I like that. I think that you don't always meet a lot of people who are just as intelligent and funny in different mediums. Um, like, who will write as well as speak very humorously, so, yeah. I'm sure the entirety of Halifax has a crush on Jonathan Goldstein now. <laughs>